Yes, uh, welcome back to our Bible study here on uh, Kwetu Talanta TV and this is the uh, second episode and we are continuing with the, uh, our studies in the book of Colossians so let's, uh, let's read the uh, scripture uh, that is uh, Colossians chapter 1 from verses uh, 3 to, to 8 we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the world, in the word of the truth, the gospel, which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth, just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. Let's go before the Lord and ask him to help us as we continue our studies. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. Thank you once more for granting us this opportunity in this Bible study. Lord, we pray that you'll enable us to understand that which you want us to understand in your word. Lord, me personally, I recognize that apart from you, apart from your anointing, apart from your power, I can absolutely do nothing. And the same applies to those who will be listening to uh, these teachings. Lord, I pray that you will open their eyes so that they may behold your glory. And I pray that you will make their hearts receptive, Lord, so that at the end of the day, they will you know, learn something and they will grow and they will be more like Christ Jesus. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, uh, let me start by reminding you a little bit of what we've been studying, you know, previously, so that you at least know where we are going. You know, uh, as I started, we said that Paul personally did not, you know, write this letter. It was somebody called, you know, Epaphras who wrote this letter. Epaphras went, you know, in Ephesus where Paul was preaching the gospel. He had the gospel. Then after hearing the gospel, he went back to Colossae. And, uh, you know, reaching there, he proclaimed the, the same gospel that he had, you know, from the Apostle Paul. As a result, the church was established. And later on, you know, he, he came back to visit Paul. And when he visited Paul, that's where he reported everything that was taking place in the church at Colossae. And as a result of the report that, you know, Epaphras, you know, brought to Paul, Paul wrote this letter to the Colossian church. And what was the purpose? You know, what was some of, you know, some of the things that, you know, he reported to Paul. So the great challenge that was taking place, you know, in the church at Colossae was, um, was you know, the false teaching. You know, the false teaching had infiltrated the Colossian church. And so Paul writes, you know, this letter to respond to that false teaching and to help the church grow, you know, in Christian maturity and you know let me uh, tell you something a little bit a little bit about you know that first teaching of course we did it last time but let me you know remind you once more these false teaching teachers i mean they did not you know deny outrightly the the gospel that you know epaphras taught no but you know they were telling your believers in the in the in the colossian church that what you you what 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 you believed you know is fine what you believed what you were taught you know uh, by uh, epaphras is fine but that itself is not enough they, they were telling them that if you really want to grow in the christian faith then you need to go beyond christ you need to add to Christ. You need to supplement to Christ. And that was, you know, the kind of preaching that, you know, Paul was combating. In fact, remember that, you know, 
the theme of the entire book of Colossians is that, you know, we believers, we are complete in Christ. We are complete in Christ. What does it mean? It means that, you know, all the resources that you and I need in order to grow in grace, in order to live a godly life, they're all found in Christ Jesus. So there are certain, you know, main points that we actually, you know, got, you know, from verse 1 and verse 2. Because remember, our focus was, last time was much on verse 1 and verse 2. Let me just give you a highlight of, uh, you know, these main points that, you know, we learned, you know, last time. We, number one, we say that, you know, Christians, you know, God calls you to, to receive scripture as authoritative in all matters of faith and life that was you know number one number two we say that you know you christians you believers you are chosen by god you set apart by god you dedicated to be his own people and then number three we say that christians in response to god's initiative god's initiative this initiative of you know choosing you this initiative of calling you out of darkness then god calls you to be loyal to him to be faithful to him and number four we say that you know believe us you are the recipients of god's grace and grace the, what did we say about grace the unmerited favor of god and then number five we say that christians in virtue of grace you have you do enjoy that kind of that inner peace in your life you enjoy that inner peace in your life right and you know what you know we say something about you know that inner peace you know it is not a peace uh, that uh, is based on on circumstances no it is a, it is a peace that is based on the uh, presence of Jesus Christ in in our lives now um let's go now uh you know in the today's passage and see what the holy spirit wants us you know to learn uh, uh this time and so we will start, you know, definitely from uh, verse uh, 3. And in verse 3, what do you see in verse 3? When you read verse 3, the, this is how, you know, the Bible says, We always thank God the Father of our God Jesus, of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. So what do you see in verse 3? In verse 3, you know, there is Paul thanksgiving in prayer. There is Paul's thanksgiving in prayer prayer he thanks god for the colossians and specifically he thanked god you know, for what he is doing in the lives of you know these uh, colossian these colossian uh, believers you know remember if you are familiar with the paul reading you know paul is letters remember that you know paul is a man who knew and what we call troubles he went through a lot of challenges you know but paul would always you know find something you know to thank the lord for now, is that your attitude, friends? Is that your attitude? You know, are you looking to your brothers and sisters and lifting up your know, thanksgiving, you know, to God for them? You know, Paul says, you know, the faith in the Colossian, you know, believers. And what does he say? He says, oh, Lord, thank you for this faith. And like I said, if you have been, if you are familiar with, with, with the letters of Paul, Paul never gives, you know, credit to, you know, his readers, you know, for the faith of, you know, his readers. No, he doesn't thank the Colossians, you know, for having, for having faith. No, but he is giving credits, you know, to God for working out, you know, this faith into their lives. You know, what does that, you know, tell you, ladies and gentlemen? This tells us that, you know, faith itself is the gift of God. Okay. Yes, of course, it is our responsibility, you know, to believe. It is your responsibility. It is my responsibility to believe. But remember that faith is a gift from God. It is not something that you work out yourself. God works in your faith in your life. Remember what you know Ephesians says in chapter 2 verse 8. He says it is by faith you have been saved through faith. It is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, but it is the gift of God. Back again in Philippians chapter 1 verse 29, the Bible says that you have been, you know, called... It is, you know, you have been granted not only to believe in Jesus, but also to suffer, you know, for him. So it has been granted to you 
for you to believe it is something that has been granted to you. It is not something that you you know you 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 made by, by yourself. Yes, it is your responsibility, but God works, you know, this faith in your life. And so Paul gives the thanks to the Lord, saying that, Oh, thank you, Lord, for working out, you know, this faith in the lives of these Colossian, you know, believers. And, you know, one thing I, I, I realized again when as, as I looked, you know, to this verse, you know, three, I realized that, you know, Paul's thanksgiving undercuts the false teaching. You see, the Colossians, um, you know, as, like I said, these Colossians, these false teachers were telling, you know, the church, you know, what you believe about, you know, the gospel is good. See, but, but, but you need more. You need to augment Christ. You need to add something, you know, to Christ. Okay. Then, but, but Paul is saying to the Colossians, no. I thank God that you have the real thing. I thank God that you, you have experienced God in his fullness. I thank God that I see evidences, signs, and, and the marks of God at work in you. I thank God that you do not need to be looking for new and improved teaching because you have got the truth. So you, you don't allow anybody to come and lie to you. No. Because Christ is everything that you need. He is the sovereign Lord in whom there is everything I and you uh, need. Oh, friends, is that your attitude? Do you thank the Lord? You know, when you watch the lives of your brothers and sisters and see the work of God in their lives, do you thank God for that? Do you? Is that your attitude, child of God? Remember, friends, if we fail to thank God for his blessing, we will begin, you know, to doubt that he answers even our prayers. If you can't see the blessings of God in your life and in the lives of your, you know, your friends, then it will be difficult for you sometimes, you know, to even go before the Lord because you say, no, God does not even answer. He can't answer my prayer. If we fail to remember that God has blessed us in the past, it will be difficult for us, you know, to... To, to believe that he will bless us now and in the future. Paul says, you know, the faith in the lives of these people and he thanks God, you know, for, for it. What is your attitude? Do you remember the blessings of God in your life? In your life and in the lives of those that surround you? You know, remember the book of Psalm 103, what, what the scripture says, you know, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And he continues to say that, you know, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, God calls you to be thankful. As you pray, remember always the blessedness, the blessings that the Lord has poured into your life, the blessedness that the Lord has poured into the lives of many. And then be grateful, be grateful to, to the Lord. Let's continue now. Then look at verse 4. And, and uh, verse three, uh, verse four and five. Then verse four, he says, "Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, and of the love that you have for all the saints, there are you know three things that I see in the, in, in that particular verse, and I've actually you know people will call it you know that is Paul's triad, you know." Paul's triad, you know, in, in the word triad, we see there is three, okay? And in other words, there is, there is what we call faith in this verse. He talks about love in this verse, and he talks about hope in this verse. Why do we, you know, often call it, you know, Paul's triad? Because he does mention it in, in so many other of his letters. For instance, when you look in First uh, Corinthians chapter you know, 13, he talks about love, hope, and, you know, faith. When you look at First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3, he talks about you know, the triad, faith, love, and, and hope. And you know, let me mention this, ladies and gentlemen. You know, when Paul talks about faith, love, and hope, he is not talking about natural characteristics. He, no, he's not talking about you know things that we have naturally as a personality, you know, attributes. Paul here is talking about uh, is talking about the qualities which are worked, you know, in us by the Holy Spirit. See. These are these qualities of faith, love, and hope. These are the evidences of the work of God in our lives. Hope, faith, and love. So when, we, when, when he, he speaks about faith, look at what he says in verse 4. You know, Since we have heard of your faith, 
Paul said, we have heard of your faith. What is, is this faith he's talking about? Faith is simply, faith is simply, you know, that reliance on Christ. Faith is, you know, that trust in Christ alone for your salvation. Faith is an empty hand that receives the gift of God. You know, I, I hope you are very familiar with the song, The Rock of Ages. You know, when he sings this song, there is somewhere he mentions, he says that, you know, nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. See, faith is that, you know, empty hand that receives the gift of eternal life. And what about, you know, love? When he talks about love, he's not, talk, he's not simply talking about human affection. Of course, it, it does go with this love. But, you know, we are called, you and I, we are called to love even when we do not, you know, feel it. Even when we do not feel it. This is the kind of love that, the kind of love that, you know, goes beyond family love, spouse love, you know, children love. It is a kind of family, you know, that, that goes beyond all that. You know, remember what the scripture says. Even thieves love their children. They love their wives. They love their spouses. Okay? Non-believers do all that. No. If our love does not go beyond that, then are we different? Are we different from them? Then do you understand that, you know, this is not the love, the normal love that we are talking about. This is, you know, a distinct gift that is given us, you know, by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Then uh, he talks about hope. We're still, you know, talking about this tribe that we see in verse, you know, three. He talks about, you know, hope. What, what, what does he mean when he says, you know, uh, hope? The hope that he's talking about, the hope he's talking about is, uh, you know, simply the, uh, he's talking about uh, the, uh, that assurance, okay? That confident assurance and expectations of, you know, the vaster blessings that, that is in store for us, you know, in the world. To come we are very sure that heaven belongs to us we are very sure that we are you know the family of god we are part of the family of god and with that hope you know we don't give up no matter what we go through we have a confident and you know a confident expectations a confident expectation that you know there is a vaster blessings stored for us you know in 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 heaven Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, is your life characterized by faith? Is your life, you know, characterized, you know, by 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 love? Is your life characterized, you know, by by hope? That is, you know, a question that I would ask, you know, everybody. If you're listening to me right now, does your life? Those are the marks of the work of God. In your life if you don't have love if you don't have hope if you don't have faith then there's, there's a probability that you know god hasn't you know started working in your life if faith has been worked in you if hope has been worked in you if love has been worked in you then you have the evidence of the finger of god in in your life so you do not need you know any mystical experiences because you've got the real then let's go, you know, to the uh, verses. Now, look at verses 5 through 8. Verses 5 through 8. He says, you know, because of the hope, like I said, laid up for in heaven, of this you have heard before in the world of the truth, the gospel. Then 6, he says, which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world, it is bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you, since the day you had it understood and understood the grace of God in truth. Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. Now, when you look at uh, verse, you know, 5 to 8, Paul gives a testimony. He gives a testimony. He testifies to the truth that, you know, these Colossians have, uh, have already you know, received. He testifies to this truth that, you know, the Colossian believers have already received. And, you know, there is a number of things that he mentions that I would want, you know, to remind you uh, uh, right now. Number one, you know, he talks about, he says that, you know, you've heard the word of truth. Then you should not allow anybody, you know, to trick you. Because these people were, you know, came to the church and they were telling them that what you, what you, what you heard, about, you know, from Epaphras, the gospel that you heard is not enough. You need to add something to it. But, you know, then he is testifying to the truth. Paul is saying that what you heard, you know, from Epaphras is the word of truth. 
is the gospel. You don't need to be, you know, tricked. You do not allow anybody, you know, to sidetrack you. No, you have heard the word of truth. Okay? Look at, you know, verse 6, which has come to you as indeed. Uh -huh. Number 5, of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, which is the gospel. Do not allow anybody to trick you, you know, bringing strange teachings that want to complement the gospel. You have everything. That's what, you know, Paul is saying. He is giving a testimony. He is testifying. Number two, this word of truth, the, the Bible says, it did not only come to you, but it is in the whole world. You know, the same message that was preached to you, it has been, you know, circulating in you know, in all the world. Because these preachers will come and say, no, we have, you know, a secret teachings that nobody knows about. But Paul is testifying, saying, no, 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 do not allow anybody, anybody to trick you. Because this gospel is not a secret. It is, you know, circulating all over the world. Everybody knows about, you know, this gospel. So do not allow anybody to, to lie to you that, you know, I have, I have a secret teachings that uh, nobody, you know, among you knows. Hey, it is circulating all over the world. Okay? Then, number three, he says that the gospel is working. Look at verse you know, 6 again, which has come you know, to you as indeed in the whole world. It is bearing fruit and growing as it also does among you since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. It is bearing fruit. Now, the gospel is transforming lives. That was Paul. That is what Paul is saying. The gospel is transforming lives. We are living in an age where people just you know, come up with the stories. Come up with the teachings that are not grounded and substantiated in the word of God. And they will tell you that it is only by following, you know, these teachings, strange teachings that you can be transformed. No. Paul is saying, no, do not allow anybody to trick you. Because the gospel is working. The gospel is transforming the lives. And this is the gospel that you need in your life. You don't need anything outside of this gospel. Look at, you know, number, number five, four. He says that Epaphras was faithful in preaching see he is faithful because remember these false teachers that's what he says number seven okay you learned it from epaphras our beloved fellow servant and he is a faithful minister of christ on your behalf he has you know taught you faithfully as he received this gospel you know from paul that's how he gave it he did not you know just preach the part of the gospel because these people would come and tell no what you know epaphras taught you is just a part of the gospel it's not in full. And then Paul is saying, no, 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 no. He was a faithful servant. He gave you the whole story. He did not you just give, he did not just give a part of the gospel. You have everything that 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 you need. You know, there are many points that I would mention here, but I'll just limit myself on, on, on five elements. And this is the last one. Then he says, You understood it. Look at this. Verse 6. As it also does among you since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. You understood the gospel. Why should you allow anybody to come and trick you when you actually understood the gospel? Beware of all these people who come, you know, with the strange teachings and telling you that, oh, no, what you believed is not enough. No, Paul is saying that you understood it. Since you understood, why should you allow anybody to come and trick you, to come and deceive you? You understood it. Oh, friends, as a, I'm, I'm moving toward my conclusion, you know, there is a, a couple of questions that I want to ask. Number one is, do you believe Paul's testimony? That's, that's my question. Do you believe this testimony? Do you believe that, you know, Paul's testimony, that, you know, the gospel, the gospel is the only, you know, sufficient one that you need. It is a soul sufficient that you need in life. There is nothing that you need outside of the gospel. If you want your life to be transformed, now embrace the gospel that, you know, Paul has been, you know, preaching. Do you believe in this testimony? Do you believe that, you know, this Christ that, you know, Paul is teaching is the only savior, the only savior that will deliver you from the bondage of sin and will give you eternal life that you need? This Christ alone is the only savior that you need in life. Now, do you believe that every Christian life should be characterized by love? Not simply emotions, but love that goes beyond families. In fact, you know, remember, Jesus told his disciples that, you know, they, they will know that you are my disciples, that you are Christians, by the fact that you love one another. Not just simply that I love you because you are my relative. If we love those who love us, you know, are we different from these sinners, these, you know, unbelievers? It is a love that goes beyond family love. 
uh, is your life characterized by hope? Do you believe that, you know, in the world to come, there is a vast blessing that is stored for you? And it is ours. Do you believe, you know, do you, do, is your life characterized by faith? Have you trusted in the Lord? Has you come with empty hands to receive? Because nothing you have. Christ has everything. And you go with empty hands and say, Lord, give me everything. Because you are everything that I need. Probably, you know, you may not have all these things that I'm talking about. But there is a good news. I still have, you know, the answer. Come to the Lord. Come to the Lord. Embrace him. Tell him that, Lord, I have nothing and I need everything from you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will fill you with hope and love and faith abundantly and exceedingly. Let's go before the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Jehovah, that this gospel, somewhere else, you said that it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes. Everyone, everyone who believes. It is the power of God. There is no other power that we need that is outside of the gospel. The gospel, it is through the gospel that you transfer us from the kingdom, from the domain of darkness into the, the kingdom of your son that you love. And it is through this gospel, through the power of the gospel, that we grow in grace and we look like you and we reflect you. Lord, I pray that you will help us to reflect on these words and you will cause them to bear fruit in our lives so that our, life, our lives will continue to shine and to reflect you among you know, those who have not yet received you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.